Oh. Welcome to you. Welcome to Baker's Question Time. Now, um, you probably, um, some of you will know Linda McTurk and Caroline Stewart. Um, <clears throat> Linda and Caroline are uh, demonstrators for SWI. Um, and uh, <clears throat> we thought this might be a, a nice way of kind of just if you've got any questions or you want to find out the best <coughs> certain thing, then between them, Linda and Caroline should know the answer. And if they don't, we're going to throw it open to the floor because we're like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so uh, and without any further ado, now that everybody's in, we're just going to have a nice relaxed time, guys. And if you if you want to ask a question, say my name and then. Wave at me. Tell, say, say my name, then say your name, and wave at me, and then I'll come to you and I can highlight you, spotlight you, so that we can see who is, is asking a question. Okay? It sounds that's more complicated than that actually is. You just shout Pauline, and then <laughs> wave at me and say it's it's Sheila or it's Coral or whatever it is, yeah. Um, and I'll find you, and then we can then we can start. Well, then just. Linda and Caroline now. So this is Linda and this Linda. is Caroline. Hello. Hello. Hi there. Hi. Hi. So who's, who, Linda, maybe you'd like to explain your your relationship with baking and, and cooking and then Caroline, you mm. do the same. Yeah. Um, when I left school, I went to uh, the Doe School, well, what I call the Doe School in Glasgow, uh, to train in uh, home economics. And uh, I eventually uh, came out as a, a teacher. And uh, I taught just for a couple of years, uh, way back in uh, the late 70s and early 80s. And um, a family came along. And uh, once the family came along, um, I actually started a, a catering business with uh, my sister-in-law and the very first function I catered for was at Shawhead Rural in the Stewartry Federation and Betty and I carried on the catering for oh, a good sort of uh, 15 years or so until she left to move up to uh, Gowrie and then I carried on myself and uh, I went back to teaching as well. So I, I, I was doing the two jobs uh, in tandem. So it was, it was quite, uh, quite a lot, uh, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. But I just love food because I, I just think there is nothing nicer than sitting around a table uh, with friends and enjoying. It doesn't need to be a sumptuous meal, you know, just food in general and uh, a nice glass of wine or a gin and tonic or something like that. I just think that is, you know, that's my idea of heaven, sitting around a table, having a good time with uh, some nice food with, uh, with good friends. So, uh, you no, know, I've been in, involved with food sort of most, uh, most of my life. That, uh, and I enjoy eating it and uh, tasting different things. Yes, lovely. Thank you. Thank you. And Caroline? Uh, well, like Linda, I went to the Doe School, the Queen's College in Glasgow, and um, I didn't get to be a teacher. Um, I went to Jordan Hill and um, I went to the, the teacher training, but I couldn't pass my psychology. I just have no, nothing in me that's anything to do with psychology. So in between times, I had been working in my aunt and uncle's um, hotel um, when I was at college for extra money. And uh, when I failed my psychology and I couldn't get a job as a teacher, I went into the hotel business. So I started off in Arden Capel in Helensborough as an assistant manager and then ended up being my own manager, you know, in various hotels, you know, in the central Scotland. So it's more um, the, the cookery side rather than the baking side that, you know, I um, kind of specialise on. However, um, my mother was a very good cook. She was um, a, a very good baker as well. Um, she was Dor Dorian District Rural at the time. And, and I knew what it was, you know, to, to take part in competitions, you know, the young farmers competitions, you know, where you had to take, you know, a, a sponge or something, you know, to uh, a, a week. Oh, that's like, that's like, 
and then when uh, I was in with the, the rural, um, we I just took part in the wee competitions that were going on as well, and then you progress on to the federation shows and the eight shows, and that's where you you know you kind of hone your skills when it comes to um, baking and such like because. If you you know that you can do something well, you'll put it into a show. Um, I also have this theory as well that if it's something difficult that not too many people um, <clears throat> enter, you're as well to have a go at it because you're going to get one, <laughs> a sub prize or a six prize, you know, depending on how many is in the class. So um, I try quite kind of different things if I have to do it on a show. And our shows are getting a bit... Um, like that at the moment, you know, that they're putting different things in for different people to try, you know, such like. Um, I enjoy baking, but there's only my husband and I, myself in the house here. And um, the more you bake, the more they eat. And <laughs> yes. it's the fact that I have got to uh, huge over the lockdown. Um, <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> it's, it's just something I really need to, you know, Hold on a wee minute. I think that's my cheese arriving because there's a parcel of fan. Right. Parcel <laughs> of food. <laughs> Talking of food. That's good. Yeah, more food. Uh, so um, I've just I've just had a, a notification from the from the girl at the cheese cheese company, and she said that um, today is the last day that she can take any orders. So just so that everybody knows, but I think, I think um, Deb definitely won't be able to take any orders. Um, because after today, because they don't um, send anything out on a Thursday and Friday. Okay. So that's my tea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Well, mm. Pauline, Pauline, yeah. can I just ask on the cheese front? I sent an email to say that I wanted to take part and how did it go about paying for etc. And I got an email saying that I would get one, but I've never heard another thing about it. Well, haven't you? Well, um, I haven't paid for mine either. No, I haven't no, paid for mine. Right, it might just. Oh, I'm the same as Linda. Um, I emailed with them as well, and I haven't heard. Yeah. We are very busy. No. We are yeah. very busy, and this week they'll take the phone you up. They will. Oh well, that's good to I know. I do have a phone number if they want the phone number, but I need to. I need to look for it. <laughs> oh, that's fine. The, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do, Jill sent me a list earlier. I'll, I'll have a wee look at the list while we're, while we're talking once we're once we get going, and okay. I'll make sure you're on it, Linda. Because if you don't, thanks, Pauline. Really that would be much appreciated. Thank you. Okay, no problem. No problem. So, shall we open up the questions, ladies? You ready? My dog wants to ask something. <laughs> <laughs> When's it getting a scrap? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> When's the bacon coming for the dog? <clears throat> I, I'll, I'll kick it off with a question then. My daughter makes lovely cakes, but she, but she is tar she's gone vegan. Um, and, and I know that you can make lovely vegan cakes. And she, but every cake she's made recently has been a wee bit um, on the wet side. You know, it doesn't rise up enough and it, it looks a bit bubbly on the top like a, a normal Victoria sponge. Um, so it, 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 she's just not getting the rise, but I said, I thought it was maybe that she, because of the, because of the vegan spread she was using and it wasn't cold, it, was, you know, it wasn't in the fridge, didn't need to be in the fridge. So it was, it wasn't cold. So it didn't, it, it maybe was something to do with that. Got any thoughts on that? That's quite niche, I know, sorry. Yeah, I know. I don't know anything about vegan at all. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> no, I I don't do uh, any vegan no. uh, vegan dishes. But if it's damp, it sounds as if it's probably something to do with the the type of sort of oil or or fat that yeah. that she's maybe using, and maybe just to cook it for a bit longer, and the, maybe the quantity of flour as well. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, would uh, sort of look into. Uh, to that. Yeah. Um, okay, thank you, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. That was a hard one. I thought I'd start you with a hard one, sorry. <laughs> has, anyone, has anyone else got a question? Just put your hand up. Oh yeah, Jan, hello, Jan. <clears throat> oh, Jan, hello. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> right, um, I 
cook a lot with, um, well, I, I do a lot of baking with gluten-free flour. And uh, one recipe I tried recently for shortbread said if, if my flour contained xanthan gum, not to add xanthan so I didn't. And the shortbread didn't turn out very nice. So would you suggest I add xanthan gum? Well, I'm not even using xanthan gum because it's got like a, a it's like a, it gives you a, like a greasy taste yeah. but to food. I, I have used xanthan gum, uh, Jan, in various things and particularly tea loaves. And I think it leaves, I think you can tell when you've used it because it leaves a sort of, for the want of a better description, a slimy sort of texture in your mouth when you've eaten, yeah. eaten the food that um, you know mm -hmm. but if your flour's already got it in it you shouldn't really need to, need to add add any more uh, xanthan no, gum that, that's what I thought but but the mm -hmm. actual shortbread didn't turn out very nice it was uh, very very fine it didn't, it didn't sort of stay solid you know what I mean uh, I was very disappointed with it. It's disheartening when you use quite a lot of butter and other things mm -hmm. to make, you know, mm. cakes or biscuits or shortbread, and, and it doesn't turn out right. So I'm reluctant to try it. I thought, well, if you if if you think I should try extra xanthan gum, I haven't. You know. <laughs> Would you, try an egg, would you try a spoonful of xanthan gum or something? I don't, Caroline, do you, do you use uh, a lot? No, I, I don't do any vegetarian baking at all. I've, you know, done vegetarian cooking and that, but uh -huh. uh, xanthan gum, I don't even know where I would start to go and look for that now. You know, do you get it in a supermarket quite easily? Yeah. You, get it in the, mm -hmm. you can get it, yeah. You can get it in a supermarket, yeah. Right. Uh -huh. Sorry, well, I, Again, I, I really don't know. <laughs> was it Dove's flour, gluten-free flour, Jan, that you were using? It was. It was, yeah. it was a self-raising flour that has xanthan gum in, uh -huh. but the plain flour doesn't. Um, right. But I was using the self-raising flour. Um, I don't know, perhaps next time, because I was making shortbread. I perhaps use plain flour and add something gum. Yeah. I'll try could try that next time instead. I would be tempted to do it uh, do it that way because I've made shortbread with uh, gluten free plain flour. Got to say it did sort of spread uh, with the biscuits spread a bit, but that sometimes can happen even with normal uh, normal shortbread. So yeah. you know I would try the plain flour the next the next time. Right, okay, I will do. Great, thank you. And the other thing was a, a quick question. When when I'm using a recipe and it suggests you use a teaspoon of baking soda or, or um, bicarb of soda, baking powder or bicarb of soda, is the teaspoon that much? Can you see it? No, that up. much? No, no, I, no, that's too much. I would no. say we do not no. care. Yes. Say that's... A teaspoon should be rounded so that it's kind of uh -huh. as much more that, more that, or even yeah. less than that. Less uh -huh. than that, right? Yeah. So more... slightly more than level. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. Same. Just, same just slightly the... more than level. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The uh -huh. same amount in the top as what <coughs> underneath in the bowl of your spoon. Ah, uh -huh. right. Rounded. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, that's fine. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks very much, Jan. Thank you. Thank you. Could I just ask, so if um, if your the recipe says a teaspoon, is that always a rounded one? Does it specify if it should be a, a level one? I, I would think it would, yes. I, I, I think there are some recipes that say level teaspoons. Yeah. But mostly mm -hmm. it's, it's rounded, yes. Right. Know, to be honest. And some and some say heat, don't they? So then yeah. you know, it's a bit yeah. 
No, no, we're okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks very much, Ruby. Have you got any other question, Ruby, while you're there? Um, no, no. I'm just I've just bought a new mixer and I'm kind of hoping for lots of hints and tips. Okay. <laughs> good, good. good. <laughs> what was the Kenwood mixer you bought, wasn't it? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. but they're super. I, I like mine. I've had it for donkey's years. Yeah, well, this one came with a glass bowl which weighs over five pounds. Oh, <laughs> I had to order a stainless steel bowl, which is half the weight, uh, uh -huh. which was another sixty-seven pounds on top of it. So I'm a bit miffed with Kenwood for, you know, putting in a bowl that most folk would find was far too heavy to lift. Oh, mm -hmm. oh what a pity! Because I've got a spare stainless steel one going. I've got a stainless steel one going spare. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I would I would suggest. I'm on my second Kenwood. My first one lasted about thirty years, um, and it was a plastic bowl mm -hmm. uh, the latest one that I bought was a, a metal bowl but both bowls you know fit quite well so so I yeah. would you know if you still have your original bowl the thing I, I don't like mm -hmm. about the new Kenwoods at the moment is the the K beater isn't as flat as what it used to be it's got more of a kind of bend mm -hmm. to it uh, yeah find it as easy cleaning yeah. it down with a spatula is what the flatter mm -hmm. K beater yeah. did this one has a different connection for the bowl Oh, right. So oh. The old bowls that I had didn't fit, in, and neither did the, the the beaters or whisks or anything. Well, they get so, crafty. Yeah. 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 I've had mine since 1982, and it's still going strong. Ah. And oh, it's, a plastic, you, it's a plastic bowl. It's yeah. a plastic bowl. It's plastic. I had mine over 30 years. Yeah, I think I had my old one more. since about 83, but it, it's, it uh, went on fire. Well, it didn't quite right. go on fire, but there was a lot of smoke coming out the back. So I didn't wait to see if it was going to burst into flames. <laughs> Thanks very much, Ruby. Um, yes, Margaret, hello, hang on a second. Hello, I'm Margaret Linsell from hello, Margaret. Midlothian Federation. Oh. And, um, <coughs> we had a new cooker installed recently uh, it's an electric cooker and the electrician who installed it very kindly gave me a gift of these oh lovely mm -hmm. that's the box they came in oh yeah mm -hmm. great wasn't the first idea of how to use them <laughs> we are. <laughs> yeah. There'll be silicon cake tins. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you just, uh, I don't often use them, but you just use them as you would normal uh, cake tins. Um, I think obviously they're very pliable, so you've got to sit them down on, you know, mm -hmm. a, a tray uh, when, when you fill them. That, put them uh, in the oven and take them out because otherwise they bend. Yeah. yeah. So oh. you, you do need to sit them on on a, a tray, you know, an oven proof tray uh, when when you use them. And um, is it quite easy to get them out of the mm. yes. Very, yeah. yeah. Probably easier than yeah. using a, a metal one. Right. That, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And you can use them in a microwave as well. Mm -hmm. oh, good. But no, they're they're easy easy to use. Good. You need to you need to show us what you made with the Margaret when you once you've made it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very well, much, Margaret. There's a lot of thing which is ginormous. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> wow. so, oh, oh that's huge. Pass, pass it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you need to grease them or no or nothing? Just put the um, I, I grease uh, mine a little bit, but not yeah. much. Hmm. I usually put, I don't use a lot of them because I've still got a lot of metal cake tins, but when I do use them, I do put a little bit uh, of grease uh, on them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I would agree with that. I only have them for um, Halloween buns that I bought for some reason, mm. and um, and I just slightly grease them. But I'm I'm a traditional, you know, tin tin person using the same tins that I've had for thirty almost thirty five. <laughs> you know. I know. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And can you put your paste your, you know, if you're making buns, do you put your wee cases in that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. That's what Margaret's yeah. got. The, yeah. the paper would... cases, if you were doing cream cake, oh. yeah, you can do, do you put that. Any paper cases in that, that's what Margaret's yeah. got. Yeah. yeah. Although it's kind of wobbly. Mm. Yeah, but on you would tree. sit it on, on a tree. On a tree, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. It's a metal tree. Uh -huh. yeah. I, I use them uh, in when I make cookies because I have flat silicone mats that yeah. I put on the cookie tin and then I put my cookie dough on it and put them in the oven and I don't grease them or anything and, and they don't stick. I just, they're easy to get off and, and uh, use. So I quite like, uh, then you don't have to wash the cookie tin that you've put them on. You just have to wash the silicone mats that you've used. So. Yeah. And they don't stick to it, so which is good. I was just going to comment on your conversation on teaspoons. I would have a terrible time in Scotland because we have the, uh, the actual, like this is a tablespoon, this is a teaspoon, a half teaspoon and a quarter. And when anything that I was ever taught, you level that teaspoon off and that's your teaspoon of baking powder, baking soda, whatever you're using. So. I'd have lots of recipe fails if I was using just a teaspoon out of my uh, out of my cupboard, or uh, you know, picking up something like that and, and making your recipes. They might not uh, might not all work for me. Mm. I always use measuring spoons because then you get a standard measure. Yeah, yeah. And it's usually a teaspoon. Is it not just a, a five grams? Oh, yeah, five yeah. Teaspoon. yeah, I think if you if you used a, a kitchen teaspoon and rounded it and measured it, I think you'd find out the same grams. So those yeah. Yeah. measuring spoons usually a little bit thicker than a, a normal teaspoon. I don't know. I don't. I know nothing. But you know. <laughs> well, we don't. I don't cook by weight. I cook by by physical, you know, volume size, whether it's liquid or or uh, solid. Yeah. So I don't know what the weight would be. Great. I think if you've got a teaspoon that you use all the time, you know, it's ideal to stick to the, the same the same yeah. teaspoon. Yeah, that would that might work better for me. Yeah. But that's what I do with these. I always pull I always pull my spoons out of the cupboard. So great. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. Um, I think uh, Kathy got a quick got a question. Hang on a sec. Hello, Kath. Oh, hi. Um, yeah, mine, mine's a, a cookery question. Um, I got out today, um, I went to a butcher's, oh yes, um, and um, I bought a ham hock. Mm. Now, the last time I used a ham hock was when I took the guides camping in 1962. <laughs> <laughs> so what I want to know is, do I soak it and soak it first and then get rid of the water? Do I put it in water, heat it up, get rid of the water? Or do I just stick it in my slow cooker overnight and that's it? I don't know about modern ham hocks because I haven't bought one for a very long time. Um, yeah. But the original one that I would have when I was at college, I put my late father-in-law had in the, the shop, they had a a grocer shop and they used to boil their own you know gam green yeah. hams and stuff like that was to soak it in cold water overnight and throw that that water out but i don't know if anybody's any other you know suggestions on it it's a long long time since i even bought um a ham bone to make soup with i just use ham stock cubes nowadays mm -hmm. <laughs> i just thought it would be it would be nice because i've got some um peas as well so i thought i, I would like to ham soup yeah. but um okay. So, you know, as far as I know, you just soak it, I'll just soak it overnight and then maybe stick it in my slow cooker. Because yeah, you could always keep the liquid cast, couldn't you? And well, that's the idea, yeah. But just in case it's, it's not salty enough, but and I think it'll be salty. 
Yeah, I think it will as well by the look of it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm making <laughs> looks salty. <laughs> I bring mine to the boil in cold water and throw that out and then start again. I don't yeah. soak it overnight. That's what I do. That's oh, what yeah. I do with a, yeah. a smoked off. And oh. is, it, is it smoked, the one you have, or unsmoked? Oh, do you know, I don't know. <laughs> is it very brown looking? Oh, no, it's not. No, it's not smoked. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I would just bring it to the boil and then get rid of the water and then start again. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I'll have a go. I do the same. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Gav. It's um, okay. Margaret, I thought, you, I think you had a, a question, yeah? Um, yeah, the baking question. Um, I've been trying some weird and wonderful recipes I've found on, like, on Facebook during lockdown. And I've made one a couple of times for bread. Now, I don't, I have made ordinary bread. I don't bother because I can't be bothered with all the kneading and you need a very hot oven. But I found a recipe for what they called beer batter bread which mm -hmm. has a bottle of beer in it, which obviously gives you the yeast yes. <laughs> and some sugar. <laughs> uh, and the first time I made it, it was really nice. It didn't keep all that long, but you know, it tasted nice. But I made it again a couple of weeks ago, and I don't know whether I put it into too hot an oven or too cool an oven or what, but the top crust was really, really tough. You any idea what would have caused that? It's not cooked in such a hot oven as conventional bread. And the recipe was a bit vague. <laughs> <laughs> and it tasted fine, but it was just this really, really hard, hard top crust. Any idea what that would have, co would have caused mm. that? Maybe to do with the amount of liquid. I mean, I was making hot cross buns and when I was putting the, the buns themselves were fine. But when I was doing the crosses, I just used water and sugar and flour to make yeah. a paste. And when they were cooked, that the crosses were brick hard. You could have <laughs> you really had to be careful. You know, they were really firm. Uh, and I just wondered if it was the amount of liquid. Maybe the second bottle of beer was slightly bigger than that. I never thought about that. I just bought the cheapest beer in Tesco. <laughs> Yeah, because they, they come in various sizes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I might try that with a smaller bottle. Thank you. <laughs> the, other, the other thing I tried was, they call them dinner rolls, but they come out more like plain scones, and they're made with mayonnaise, and they're nice, Ooh. and they're oh. incredibly mm -hmm. easy. Mm -hmm. And they're far easier than scones, because you don't have to rub anything in. You just mix up this stuff in, in the oven. They were quite good. <laughs> mm. Ah, great. Anyway. On, Blue, on Blue Peter, many moons ago, when I was a child, they made a chocolate cake with mayonnaise. Uh, yes. Ooh, yeah. yeah. And I still have the recipe uh, somewhere, but I can remember them doing uh, doing that. Yeah. But, uh, but, but when I make my scones now, um, I mean, I was taught probably like Caroline to rub the fat into the, the flour and mm -hmm. then add the uh, the milk but uh, I've got a recipe which uh, I got at one of the schools that I was uh, working at and it was a chef that came into the school and it's where you cream the margarine and the sugar together oh. and then you add an egg and milk and then you just uh, fold in well I always mix it in with a fork uh, not a fork a knife yeah. when I'm putting my flour into the scones and you just add the flour with a knife and it becomes like an ordinary scone dough but it's it's a super recipe and it oh, works nice. uh, it works really well wow. uh, when I'll, I can post it on Facebook um, oh, yeah. I'll put it uh, put it on there because it's nice and easy uh, to do but, uh, I think I think Dan Coleman, you had a question about scones, didn't you? Yeah. Can you hear me, Anne? Yes, my scones always come out like cannonballs. <laughs> <laughs> 
they don't seem to rise and be light and fluffy at all ever. What am I doing wrong? Are, are you? Oh, sorry, Caroline. <laughs> I would say you're overworking them. As soon as you've got the mixture, you know, to the right consistency, um, just roll it out very lightly once and turn it over, um, not turn it over, fold, fold it into three and then um, turn it around and, and work it again and then put them into the fridge or if you've got a very cold kitchen, then leave them sitting so that they rise. Well, they don't rise, but they don't, um, will not mm -hmm. fall when you put them into the freezer, into the oven, sorry. You know, just keep, mm. keep them cold and don't work them very, don't very much. Don't forget backside of the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And how, I, how thick would you cut them? Um, maybe it's slightly less than half an inch or so. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, half, half an inch. I need to yeah. get a measure out. I'd win it this morning, but I'll put it away again. Yeah. <laughs> half an inch is usually for half an inch. What's yeah. that? Um, it's about six, um, six millimeters. Is that like a centimeter? Half, and a, half a cent. Is it? Half an, half an inch, it's about six six millimeters. One centimeters. <laughs> mm -hmm. What are you saying, Shirley? What do you think? I, I thought half an inch would be about one and a half centimeters. Would you? Yeah, 2.5 uh -huh. centimeters. Half an inch is about one and And when I do my scones, I don't always roll them out. No. Um, no. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Pat them out with my hand, uh, you know, just to the, the depth that I want them, and then uh, cut them out after after that. Um, I just make one big one, just mix it, put it onto the 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 tin, shape it into a round, and then just score it eight times into triangles. Comes out really good after that. It saves a lot of cutting out. Yeah. It's lazy. Oh, I shall keep persevering. <laughs> <laughs> I can do pastry and everything else, but gone's just lazy. <laughs> Does it matter what shape they are, if they're wedges or squares or rounds? As long as, they, <laughs> as, long as they taste good. <laughs> There's a, 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 a cafe in, um, in Rosshire, in West of Ross, that they have, uh, they do Paddington scones, and it's basically a big tray bake of scones that are all melded together. Um, but you know, you can see where you could rip them apart, and then they slather them with um, uh, mar uh, marmalade on the top. Mm. Mm. Uh -huh. It tastes good too. You need quite a hot oven for oven scones, am I right? Yes. Yeah, you yeah. do. Maybe that's what's wrong, on. Maybe your oven's no. Yeah. Hot enough? Mm -hmm. Well, it should be. Huh? And it's a fan oven as well. So. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. No, it's definitely, it'll be something I'm doing. I don't find it something I'm doing. <laughs> well, well oh. I, I'll, I'll post the, the recipe that I use and you can try it out, Anne, and see what you think and let me know mm -hmm. whether it, uh, it works out or not. But, uh, Great, because they're ni nice and easy. But, um... They sound good. They sound good. Now, just before I go to go to someone else, um, Linda Retson's asked, is there a nice topping that you could suggest for a chocolate cake, chocolate sponge? I think Maz has just given one. Yes, I know that, I know. So Maz, oh. has, Maz has said, Maz has said, fresh raspberries dusted with, Icing sugar, then serve with cream or creme fraiche. That sounds delicious. You got any suggestions, guys? Could make a ganache with uh, mm -hmm. melted chocolate and cream, mm -hmm. and pour pour that over the the top. Mm -hmm. That's what nice. What quantities, but... Linda, would you use for that? Sorry. What quantities would you use for that for each? Uh, <laughs> Now, see, quite often when I bake, I just shove the stuff uh, in. <laughs> <laughs> um, thinking back to the last time I made uh, I made a ganache, uh, 
Well, it depends, obviously, what size your, your cake is. Um, Normally just be maybe about an eight inch one. Yeah, I would use like a small tub of, of cream Maybe uh -huh. not quite, maybe not possibly the, the whole lot. And then melt uh, some chocolate, good quality, not baking chocolate, but sort of reasonably good quality eating chocolate uh, into that. And uh, watch you don't overheat it though, because it'll go all thick and horrible and not nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but um, I would do it in a bowl over hot water uh, mm -hmm. as well. Would that be double cream? Yes, okay. I use double cream. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I'll try both plazas and that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great. Thanks, Linda. Thank you. So I'm going to ask Sheila now. Sheila's got a question. Right, right Sheila? Yeah. Can you, can you see that chocolate cake? Oh, well. No. Who's, who's talking? Oh, Jan, hello. Hang on a second. Yeah. I, I actually found this in uh, this weekend's Daily Mirror. Oh, yeah. Just a lovely oh, yeah. chocolate cake, yeah. and it's got a buttercream outside with chocolate swirls on the top. Nice. So I was thinking of doing that for my, uh, Easter. That sounds <laughs> nice. Um, sorry, let me find out what how you do the decoration. It's a it's a hundred and fifty grams of dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. For the swells, I put it over a pan and melt it in in the pan, I, and then put it on, spread it over mm -hmm. uh, some greaseproof paper, and then you must uh, you drag a cheese. It says a cheese stain. Mm -hmm. over the surface to make the curl mm -hmm. so you could decorate a chocolate cake but oh, that all sounds quite nice yes <laughs> that sounds good. That sounds good. thank you jan thank you right um, sheila your, your question <laughs> yeah. thank you okay. um uh, probably something that everybody else knows the answer to but i make a nice um uh spiced fruit loaf and it's from a rural, an old rural um, cook, a recipe book. And of course it says, it doesn't give any temperatures, it says um, moderate oven. Now, every time I make it, um, although it tastes really good, it wouldn't do for competition because the top is always badly cracked. Now I suspect that it's the oven temperature that's wrong. Um, I'm using a fan oven, any suggestions? Is it the temperature or is it something else I'm doing wrong? I mean, it rises up in the middle and then it really cracks badly. Doesn't when, affect the taste. <laughs> no. When you put it when you put it into the tin, do you make a sort of hollow in the centre of it so it's um oh, no, not that, completely no. flat? It's got a kind of a slight hollow so that it's not going oh. to encourage it to, to rise. And I, I'm a fan of and, and I would use 160 degrees for a moderate oven. Yeah, well, that's about what I've been using, yes. Right. So, But I've never thought of putting a, a hollow in the middle. That I'll try that. Yeah. yeah. You know, a ditch. A ditch, <laughs> yes. A ditch. <laughs> okay, thank you. That is nice, though, Sheila. <laughs> it is, I mean, it's, it's really, it is nice. Sometimes it's a bit um, dumplingy, mm -hmm. but that's there's nothing wrong with that. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you. Um, Shirley, you've got your hand up. I, have you got a question? Yeah. Hi. Yes, um, I just wanted to ask. I'm um, about to buy a new cooker. I've never been happy with the fan oven that I have. It, uh, it's, it's not even. I've got to move stuff around in it. You know, it, uh, it cooks hot at the back, which a fan shouldn't do. Does anybody have any recommendations? What's a good... I was looking at Neff, but maybe somebody has better ideas. I think uh, Bosch, mm -hmm. Bosch seem to be the ones that are um, there mm -hmm. saying that they are completely focused mm -hmm. on the actual baking. Um, that, that would be my, my, my I mean, I, don't, I haven't got a Bosch and I've got, I've got no interest in, in the company. 
So, but, <laughs> but you know, um, I. Uh, but I think that they, they they often say that they're the best for baking. But but you know who we, we, I'm sure. Um, I'm sure if you looked up some of the top chefs, you would find out a good a good oven. They must. Shirley, I, Shirley, I've got a, a Siemens oven which oh, yeah. has got uh -huh. a fan and it, it has the option to make it a top and bottom heated. There's so many options in it, some I've never used. In fact, I discovered during lockdown it's an automatic cleaning um, device, which I hadn't realised. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it does give you the option for, for both the fan, which I find the fan works really well, but it also gives you the option for top and bottom heating, you know, like convention heat as well. Um, and I, and I have, happy we are. Yes, I I have two two of them. The other one is a smaller oven, but it has also has a grill and a microwave in it. Um, but the big oven has to say has all these options. And um, I've never touched wood, never done any bother with it. I never think, except from a fruit loaf slice in the middle, everything else comes out fine. <laughs> <laughs> I was, can I can I also ask you, Caroline, because I remember you once said that your favourite thing to bake is an egg sponge. Mm -hmm. Tell me, tell me, tell me the secret, because uh, I, I, you know, I see them in shows about this size. Mine are if if I get it up to this size, I'm I'm delighted. Um, it's putting an extra but, egg egg, but, egg yolk egg yolk into it. One an extra an egg, extra egg, egg yolk. yolk. An e an e no, an extra egg. So my egg sponge recipe is six eggs with just five ounces of caster sugar whisked together uh -huh. to, to stiff, you know, a, a stiff peak. Mm -hmm. and, and then fold in five ounces of plain flour and use a metal spoon to fold it in. Don't use your spatula or a wooden spoon or anything. Oh, I've got a metal spoon that's got slots in it. It's part of a set I got as a wedding present, you know, where it's got my potato masher and, um, you know, yeah. the sorted spoon. And what's the other thing in it? Yeah. There's a kind of sorted thing. And um, mm -hmm. 20 minutes at 200 degrees. And butter the tins. Um, and then put a wee dust it off. 200, 200 degrees. That That's fan. a fan, fan oven for 20 minutes. Okay. Um, and grease your, your tins, you know, butter your tins beforehand and put a slight, mm -hmm. you know, covering of flour, um, just a slight, you know, to, to help them to come out. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's my recipe. Thank you. Would I shall a, give it. Sorry. Would that be all right for a Swiss roll as well? Yes, but you'll not use um, as many eggs. You'll just use, is it two eggs I use oh. from a Swiss roll? Three eggs? That's my glass. Mm -hmm. Cookery book recipe. Yeah. Um, half half the ingredients for a Swiss roll. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, brilliant! Try that. Mm -hmm. And is is that an eight inch sponge tin? Um. Yes. It's quite a deep tin. I've got. I'll, I'll maybe go and look them to. I've got different <laughs> tins for sponges. So I've got the ones that I do my butter sponge in, and the ones that I do my um, egg sponges in. Just give me a minute. Okay. It's funny that, isn't it? Because I call that a fatless sponge, not an egg sponge. Well, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's often a fatless sponge here. Yeah. Now, a friend of my mother's used to call it a fly away sponge because it was supposed <laughs> to be so light it could fly away. <laughs> well, that's nice. Yeah. Like fly away. I'll tell you. I wish I could get mine to fly away. <laughs> I've never made one, but I've made Swiss rolls, which are kind of the same, similar. Yeah, anyway. yeah I'm okay with you're using that deep tint. Uh -huh. So, so this is a seven and a half diameter by one and a half pre mm -hmm. tin, and that's what I would make my butter sponges in. I've got my egg sponges are this tin, which is much deeper, and it's probably. It's probably yeah. eight inches because mm -hmm. the seven and a half fits in it very well. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my egg sponge mm -hmm. tin. Mm -hmm. There, it doesn't have anything written on it, <laughs> but it's certainly deeper and is eight inches. <clears throat> whereas the butter sponge tin is seven and a half, and it's you know it's a shallower tin. Mm -hmm. Most of my tins are, 
a prestige made, you know, my, my bacon tins, my bun tins, my, my trays, everything. I think that was obviously what was fashionable in the 1980s, middle 80s when I got married and you know, my mother gave me them or, or I bought them myself. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks very much, Shirley. Really? Thank you. Yeah. Oh, Sorry, Shirley, on you. Sorry, I've cut you off. No, no, another try. Great, good. Um, I'm going to go to Anne now, Anne Fiddies. Hello, Anne. Hello. Um, just has anybody got any hints about measuring syrup? <laughs> oh. <laughs> a hot spoon. Yeah. Yeah. Heat spoon. Yeah. I, I heat my spoon. I have a, a Pyrex cup that I keep my, my spoon in with the boiling water and keep it hot and uh -huh. just, you know, use it. You're, you're generally, well, I don't generally use more than maybe two tablespoons at any one time. Um, yeah. And I just, you know, take it in very quickly, take it out and put another, you know, spoonful in. So a hot spoon, though, I have heard people talk about flouring the spoon you know beforehand I've, I've never used that it's just a, no, I don't a hot one no I've heard of it a hot spoon um I, you've seen me uh, put putting the saucepan in the uh, on the scales and then weighing that and then <laughs> trying to drip this syrup in it until it's the right uh, you know amount and and cutting off it's, it's uh, yeah I think the hot spoon's probably a better idea <laughs> I sometimes put the, pot, the pot of syrup in a hot uh, pot of hot water so that uh -huh. it's warmed up and then I hold the spoon over the sink and pour it in the excess will drip away and then you've got your spoon to dip in then I use a wee teaspoon to get it out of the spoon in the excess you do of course get syrup now in squeezy plastic bottles yes, I use. Yeah. Yeah. it's, not, it's not quite the same <laughs> no. I think they, I don't Save syrup. It seems to be. It seems to be not a stick. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. I, th I quite like the syrup in the the tin. Occasion for Rocky Road bars, I would use the squeezy syrup. But for gingerbreads, I always use the the syrup that you get mm -hmm. in the tin. And I would set the tin in a basin of hot water to soften it. All right. All right. Yeah. But if it's squeeze four ounces of syrup, how do you measure your four ounces of syrup then with your spoons? Yeah, usually a tablespoon is approximately two ounces, I think I'm right in saying. Mm -hmm. uh, something oh, like right. that. I, I'm saying approximately, Annette. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, uh, a tablespoon is about two, two ounces. Three millilitres. I get, I get mixed up between a tablespoon and a dessert spoon. I know that's stupid. I should know by now. No. It's your tablespoon make your big one. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah. yeah. And your dessert is your weird one. Yeah. Nice. That's you're the one that you're putting with. <laughs> yes. Actually, yeah. you know, it's ridiculous because every time I, th I go, I think, oh, is that the dessert spoon or is that the, the, mm. the tablespoon? <clears throat> A bigger one. Oh. Yeah. Right. You'll be going through your puddings pretty quick if you eat oh, with a tablespoon. I know, but I think my mind just a tablespoon, dessert spoon. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, wait, back to that. Uh, then two is the dessert spoon, did you say was equivalent no. to? No, a tablespoon. Your tablespoon is, is approximately two ounces. If you put that's tablespoon. an idea. Right. Tablespoon. No, that's a good, good. Uh -huh. Approximately right. Mm -hmm. well, that's can can you ever have too much syrup, though? No. <laughs> <laughs> but then when it says you, if you're, you're maybe, maybe four ounces of syrup, maybe then four ounces of treacle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do a bit like what, which Anne did. If a Pyrex wee dish, and I just put it on my scales and wait. Then I get nothing, nothing, and it's, yeah. it's kind of damp. It's damp, and I just pour everything in. Mm. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe an easier way to do it then. Yeah. Tablespoon. Mm -hmm. Great. Good. I, was, I, I was taught to to uh, cook with tablespoons. There was no way in out. It was all done by tablespoons. Yes. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. 
I'll no, I'll no forget that. That's a good thing. Good. Does anyone else have any questions? Not a question, but just an observation. Sorry, I'll go to, I'll go to Evelyn first because you started speaking and then I'll go to Janet, all right? Sorry, it's just I was always under the impression that a tablespoon was an ounce and I do a loaf where it's an ounce of the treacle and an ounce of syrup and I've, I've oh. always just put a tablespoon in. Yeah, I, I it, turn, it was it's turned out, mm. turns out okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, there you are. Oh, right. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I, when I was at school and we used handy measures, one rounded, a rounded tablespoon was an ounce when it was flour. Mm. But because of the density of treacle and syrup, you know, a tablespoon is approximately mm. two ounces. Ah, yeah. ah. I'll yeah. need to put a bit less in then. Ah, that's super. Too sweet. Thank you. <laughs> well, Janet, so you were going to ask a question? Yeah. I'm going to sit um, and let me find you. Oh, sorry. There we go. Hi, I see you. There we go. Yeah. Um, ages ago, Linda had a picture of Empire Biscuits in the magazine. And they just sort of looked and they looked at you and, and you felt like putting your hand in and say, come eat me. <laughs> um, and it, I think it's because of the finish of the icing. And that's what I'm looking for some help with because me and icing, <clears throat> well, it's like a cow with a gun and I think, oh, it's too thick <laughs> or it's too thin. Um, and I'm not, I'm quite a traditionalist. I'm, the Empire Biscuit has to have a bit of cherry on it, but I just would like some help with how to finish that icing on top of the Empire Biscuit. Well, Any ideas? Do you use a knife or do you use a spoon to put it on top of your biscuits? Well, I sometimes have a mug of hot water with a knife in it. So I've got a kind of hot knife but that sometimes can make the ice you know once you put a wee drop of icing on it it can make it too thin and it starts running uh-huh um i i would use a, a spoon a teaspoon so when i'm mixing my icing sugar and cold water um together to get the right consistency and that's when yeah. you need a very drippy tap because you just want to yeah. put at the time to get it to the right consistency and then I use a teaspoon to put a probably about a level teaspoonful of icing onto the biscuit and then use the back of the spoon to tease it out to the edge and as close to the edge as what you can get it, you yeah. know. So it's the back of a teaspoon that I use and the teaspoon right. I have is a very rounded teaspoon I've got two sets of teaspoons in my kitchen but all the other ones that <laughs> husband uses for 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 sugar and cheese coffee and such like other rounded ones whereas the ones that I like to use for just stirring my tea are flatter teaspoons so we each have a set of teaspoons that we use but I use his <laughs> rounded teaspoon the one that's got more of a rounded bowl to um to tease the icing to the very end Right. So, uh, yeah, I, I would do it the same way as Caroline and use the back of the, the teaspoon. Never, to spread. I must never ever try that. I must try that. Yeah, and then yeah, when, you're cutting, when you're cutting your cherries, you need to get about a million pieces out of so I know that. <laughs> That's right. You know, that uh, and not a great big dod of cherry in the, the middle. Well, I, um, the first time I took empires to a rural meeting, they were, oh, oh, why is there no jelly tots? And I said, well, I'm very sorry, but Empire Biscuits don't have jelly tots on them. They have cherries, do you know? <laughs> and as you say, I mean, half a glass of cherry would do a batch of yeah. empires. <laughs> but it was oh. just sometimes I feel like I can see the biscuit through the icing and other times it's too thick. And I thought, I wonder how you just get that Obviously, I'm just going to have to keep making them and keep mm -hmm. practicing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Linda, can I ask you, 
Well, oh. can I ask you, can you miss some of the sugar out of a recipe for Empire Biscuits? Because the rest, I think it's the a recipe, the cook, rural cooking book that I've used, but I find them terribly sweet. And the ones that I buy in the shops are not so sweet, so I actually prefer them. <laughs> Do, um, the recipe I use, I've got the recipe book here. It's brilliant. <laughs> Anybody that's got that. And it's uh, <laughs> got, um, wait, I see, I think it's... Um, Icing sugar that's yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. in the, huh? the the recipe, and I quite like it, quite like it. Um, it's quite a good recipe. I don't know whether you have that one, Linda. Don't think I do. You know, it's, that, that's the original copy of it. <laughs> that's right. I might have the original one, Caroline. Oh, that looks yeah. familiar. <laughs> I think I've got about thirty-five. Yeah, I've got about three copies because <laughs> uh, I think they've yeah. done three. Three different ones, and uh, I use the the Empire Biscuit recipe out. Yeah, I'll have a look at that one. I just find the one that I do is too sweet for me. I mean, I have got a sweet tooth, but for some reason or other, the Empire Biscuits seem to be very sweet compared to the bought ones. Yeah. The Empire Biscuit out of Anne's book and Lamb in, in lockdown. The Empire, ah. Bis Empire Biscuit out of there is quite nice. Oh, I've got that one then. I'll try mm -hmm. that one. I, I use this Aberdeenshire book. It's only got two ounces of sugar in it. So that's uh, yeah, the one that I think Linda and I will use is eight ounces of margarine, three ounces of icing sugar, yeah, and 12 ounces of flour. Flour. Uh -huh. So you this can cut down the flour. Uh -huh. You know, you can always cut, maybe about, I cut it, cut the sugar down maybe about an ounce or so. Oh. But, uh, and I, can I ask you, Linda, because I noticed your Empire Biscuits were plain, plain round. Yeah. Um, I, I was always taught for sweet you used a fluted cutter. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and it makes them more difficult, of course, to match if it's, if it's fluted. Um, and I, so I, I changed to a round cutter, but then, wouldn't well, have been last year, there wasn't a show last year, the year before, I was beaten by the only fluted one. <laughs> yeah, the, judge, the judge there was all wrong. I would tend to use, for Empire Biscuits, I tend to always use just a plain uh -huh. cutter. Yeah. But do you know, at the end of the day, <laughs> Quite frankly, I think, does it matter, you know, whether it's fluted or round, as long as they taste good, you know, yeah. and are decorated well. I know. Uh -huh. that, that's what I would go for. That um, When I did some of my judges training a year and years ago, we were told at that time you used fluted for sweet and uh -huh. round. Please. Yes, that's uh -huh. real. I had this discussion with the national judge as well, and she said the same as Linda. She said, "Taste always comes first. Yeah, <laughs> or years later. Right. Yeah, I I totally agree with uh, with that. <laughs> Does anybody else call them German biscuits? When I was a child, we actually called mm. them German biscuits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, my, my they are known as German biscuits in certain places. Yes, I mean, I grew up in, in Perthshire. We always called them German biscuits, but they, they seem to be totally, they've totally become empire. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, my, my daughter-in-law, who's from West Lothian, calls them German biscuits. But yes, up, here, up here in Aberdeenshire, they're always double shortbread. Yes, oh. yes, oh. yes, I know it's oh. as well. Mm -hmm. no, I've never heard of them until I came to Scotland. No. <laughs> and Bel Belgian biscuits, yeah. Oh. Yeah. But I do like them with half a cherry on. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Not for a competition. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just tell you a very quick, very funny story about a fatless sponge? Yeah. And it knows that. When I was in Winton I was in Mule Rural, and every year we had a big Scottish night uh, with dancing, which was very popular. But we also had a huge tea, you know, homemade tatty scones, crumpets, flyaway sponges, you name it, we had it. And one year there was a terrible storm, and the member who was bringing the fatless sponges was coming from Port William, and the road <laughs> was blocked, so she couldn't come. However, we still had a good turnout and we had a great big tea, but in the middle, surrounded by this 
sea of wonderful food, this man came up to me and said, there's no fatless sponge. <laughs> <laughs> And all he really wanted was a cream, you know, a piece and, of cream. Uh -huh. I said, too bad, they're, in, they're all in Port William. You know? <laughs> well, that was obviously the highlight of the tea for him. Uh -huh. Fatless fudge with this fresh cream. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was good. Uh -huh. I, think, um, I think, Elizabeth, you had a question about um, Jack biscuits, didn't you? Can I ask you to unmute and then you can maybe ask that question, yeah? Um, before we, can you hear me? Before we get to that, um, I thought the German biscuits changed their name because of the war. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what my mother said. Prior, um, I'm retracking on the silicon dishes. Um, a number of years ago, my daughter gave me for my birthday, and were Jamie Oliver the muffin ones. A dozen plus six were went with it and they're absolutely wonderful they're stronger than those pliable ones but they're wonderful for muffins you know if you're making savory muffins you don't want them in paper cases mm -hmm. and they're lovely with a bit salad and everything mm, nice. um, that was just about that but yes jap cakes came up in a conversation and i tried them one day and of course they're eggs and ground almonds and coconut and they all got wasted so I wondered if the ladies had any tips mm -hmm. thanks Elizabeth. over to Linda <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well funnily enough I made jap cakes the other day and I've got one sitting here for my coffee <laughs> just bring it over like that, that. <laughs> You see? Oh, nice, yes. Oh, jab yeah. cakes. I've never heard of them. No, never, never, never heard of them. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, and all that's in them is um, egg whites, sugar, and ground almonds. Ground almonds, yes. And I don't put coconut uh, near them. And you whisk up your egg whites and uh, add your sugar and ground almonds, and you bake it in a Swiss roll tin. And then once it's the mixture's partly set, you get a round scone cutter um, and cut the rounds while the mixture's still in the tin. And then you pop it back into the oven for a wee while uh, to cook a bit more. And then you take it out and you end up with these wee round bits. But obviously there's a lot of mixture in between that's cooked. So what I do is uh, I put that uh, <clears throat> excess back in a, a cooler oven to brown off and I make the crumbs with it and uh, make the crumbs in the food processor and that's what I use for round, round the edge. So there's two, <laughs> two biscuits there and I just put them together with the buttercream and uh, Coat the edges with the, the, the crumbs and do it that way. Maybe we could put that recipe on as well for us, Linda. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll I'll do that. That uh, I made these uh, for the afternoon tea when I sat my proficiency test uh, right. several years ago, but I don't know what I did because um, <laughs> the judge couldn't get a knife through the middle of them. It was something. <laughs> It was the butter icing had actually, I do know what, I ended up putting them in the freezer because, you know, you think you've got all the time in the world. And I thought, oh, this, when the test was going to be, I thought I'm going to make these and put them in the freezer. And for some reason or other, the, there was something wrong with the, the butter icing and it went brick hard. Uh, the rest of this, the macaroon bit was fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, we used to have a baker's in uh, Castle Douglas called Corson's, which is now shut. And they did the best Jap cakes in the world. Mm. They, they were absolutely mm. delicious, but uh, they're no longer there. So, uh, and they did theirs with a selection of, say, coffee icing or chocolate icing or pink or whatever. But uh, these ones that I've made are coffee. 
So mm -hmm. quite enjoyed do, doing never, them. I've never heard of them, but I must try yeah. them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, they're lovely. That was, that was worth waiting for, was it? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> is that like a meringue mixture? It, it is. It's it's like a macaroni meringue type uh, type mixture. Yeah. That uh, and it, it's really quite easy to do. It's actually in this SWRI cookery book from donkeys years ago. Oh, but right. I'll I'll right. type out the recipe and I'll put it on the the Facebook. That would be grand. Mm -hmm. Page. That, um, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Elizabeth. That's great. Thank you. Now, does anyone else have any any questions? I've got a funny story about jab cakes. Um, when I, I interviewed, uh, you know, the playwright John Byrne. Um, I interviewed him in Inverness, and he used to live in Nairn, uh, near Inverness, and mm -hmm. um, the. The local butcher up there, a local, local baker up there, is called Harry Gow, and uh, and he's got quite a lot of different shops all over Inverness and Invernessshire. And um, he heard that that John was in town, so he sent a box of Jap biscuits to him because they were his they were his favourite. And they they arrived when I was talking to John, and uh, and I've I've never seen someone look so delighted. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh my god Jack, this is amazing you know we're in this lovely hotel but he, he didn't care he had his had his jack biscuits so that was good <laughs> so um does anyone have any more questions questions for the girls i must tell you while while we're while we're looking um that the next issue of women together has a has a special um an easter special and it's done by linda mcturk she didn't. She didn't really plan it that way, but she was. She was the person that gave me lots of lovely recipes. So I thought I would do a, a wee special on, on um, Linda's Easter. You, you were there were things that you did in demonstrations normally for Easter, weren't they, Linda? Yeah, I was down in Wigtonshire. I'm sure Annette would be there doing oh, an Easter um, several years ago. So it was just what the recipes I'd used for that that I just sent off to you, Polly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so well, they're all on the cards um, on the back page this this month. So, so if you fancy any of them, that's in the magazine. Okay. So no more questions. Are you, uh, you've got you've got off quite lightly. Well, what about what about the uh, party scones? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right, there's, well, there's, right, there's a lot of people out there wondering who they get the tarty scones the way they should be. You can you can make tarty scones in it. I've seen. I know, them. but I just wondered what uh, if what other folk would think of the tarty scones, Linda. What do you do with your tarty scones in Caroline? Just mashed potato and some flour. Uh huh. And that's it. That's what I do. Uh -huh. You don't put yeah. butter in them. Oh gosh. Uh, do no. I think I know a friend. Well, I know a friend puts melted butter in hers, but I tried it. But no, I went back to the traditional way. Just the, I think when I mash the potatoes in it, I just put a wee dot of butter in the potatoes when I'm mashing them, but uh, right. it's, it's next to nothing. So it's basically oh. just flour and the tatties. Uh -huh. I'm looking for my recipe and my friend Helen Johnson, who's listening in, uh, right. it's her recipe, but I can't find it in here. Right. <laughs> um, uh -huh. That's a mint jelly recipe, but... Um, it's Helen's potato scone recipe, and I think there is a little butter in it. Uh -huh. um, and sieve the mashed potatoes as well. You know, mash them after you've had them for your tea, but sieve them as well to make sure that mm. they're very, very fine. I know. You put them through the ricer, Caroline. I put mine through the ricer as well. Uh, yeah. uh -huh. And then if another friend, oh, I don't bother putting them through the ricer, they're fine just mashing them up. But I says, if you just do the ordinary way, you get a wee lumps of yeah, you don't, don't you? No. I tried it. I know, it's, not, I know <laughs> it's a lot of bother gonna get the rice they're out and they're nice and puff, fluffy and fine, but it says Irene, mean, you don't oh you just pick me wee bit suit she says. There's making things for yourself and there's making things for a competition. I know. <laughs> much more particular for um uh -huh. uh, competition, you know, rather than the 
you know, just the way that you would do it for yourself and your I, I know, but oh no, I don't see how go. I might, I might, I might, I kind of rice a thing. It's fine the way they are, and all the rest. And, no, I says you need to put it through the rice to make it lovely and fine. And uh -huh. I don't uh, have a rice, I just use a, a metal sieve, you know, run them through the. What sieve. do you mean a metal a metal sieve? No, I just I mean, a metal sieve, or a plastic sieve, you know. So just put them in the the metal sieve and just you know take a spoon, the back of your spoon, to push them through. Oh, right. very fine. I've never tried that. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't have a ricer, so <laughs> I'm no, going to buy a ricer just for potato scones. <laughs> no, that's true. Uh -huh. True. Remember the old fashioned kind we had when my, mom, my mother's had them? A wooden, wooden turkey chopper. Yeah. No, well, I'm a mooley. It's the ricer I'm talking about. It's right oh, here. Right. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. Like a moolie in it. Yeah. What's that? Like a moolie. <laughs> All right. You used oh. to put it in and turn the handle. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. no, no you press it through. Oh. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Um, now, any more questions? Or do we all know everything there is to know about baking now? Oh, really? <laughs> oh. There's a pink thing flying through the air. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, tell, I tell you, what about this? Is a stupid question. I, the puff pastry that you buy, right? Yeah. Why can I? Why does it not come up nice and puffy the way it used to do years ago, Glinda and Carl? You know, I, funnily enough, I noticed that the other week because I no, was. No, did you? Yeah. <laughs> Without a word of a lie, because I was doing a wee pie thing for a friend and uh, had some extra beef left. And I thought, I'll oh, uh -huh. do a wee steak pie. And I've got a uh, bought puff pastry. And I mean, it only rose about so much. I mean, I know. I thought it would have been about double the day. Well, that's what I was yeah. expecting, mine's, but why did it not rise? And that, in fact, that was the second time that uh, that, that had happened. I don't know. Uh, I don't know why. Whether they've changed the manufacturing of it, I'm not sure. But, uh, and I even marked it across the top, you know, with a knife and made it fancy for it. It was steak pie. Uh -huh. I says, Peter, that's no resonance. That's no radius. I don't well, know why. I've just got my husband to go and find a box that it was puff pastry that I bought because we're having steak pie for our tea tomorrow night. Right. Um, and again, like you're saying, Annette, um, I just took the pastry, you know, and uh -huh. pulled the top off it and put some egg on it. And that hasn't risen anything much like what it would be. No. And that's Marks and Spencer's puff pastry. That's, that's good puff pastry. Yeah, it used to rise up. It used yeah. to rise up. Yeah. Yeah. Rise an awful lot more. It uh -huh. used to do, it did. Mm -hmm. But that was that was just what I did, you know. That's uh -huh. the way I would make a steak pie because there's only two offers, you know, so uh -huh. it's two a bit of pastry in the top of it. I know. But, uh, there you are now. I, I don't know. Are you using um is it Scott's puff pastry or what? Bale's puff pastry? Bale's, it was Bale's because it was Bale's puff pastry. Yeah. There you well, go. I can it agree with just, that, Annette. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just draw I had, you know. Uh -huh. I thought it would have risen, but no. Mm -hmm. but, how many of you how many of you ladies ever used or heard of um a cake collar? You put on the outside of the cake tin so it rises yep. evenly. I, I've yep. never used it, but I have heard of yeah. them. I think you get them at Lakeland. Well, I still call it Lakeland Plastics, mm -hmm. but, yeah. 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 you know, I've never used, used I, one. I read about, I was looking at a recipe on Pinterest the other day, and I didn't know what it was, so I Googled it. Um, I've never, ever seen them. I have never heard of it until then. So I just wondered if they work. If you, yes, yeah. I, I bought one from Lakeland just a couple of weeks ago, and I used it last week for a sultana, no, a, a sultana cake, yeah, mm -hmm. um, and it did, it did make it, it still cracked on the top, I, I had hoped mm -hmm. it would, you know, just a slight crack though, but yeah. it, it did, oh. it rise, you soak it, you soak it in yes. water, before you put yeah. it on, oh, I have, to, I have to try it, I have to go and get oh. it. And they open again. Thank you. I haven't tried it in a sponge yet, but yeah. Mm. It works better for a multi layered cake mm. where well, you want them all to be flat with yeah. the buttercream in the middle. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can, can I ask something going back to when ready made short crust pastry? I made a quiche the other day and uh, it didn't say to bake the pastry before I put the quiche inside. And uh, when it when it came out of the oven and in for I don't know forty five minutes or something, the pastry still looked as though it wasn't cooked. Mm-hmm. Do you think if I do it again, because I'm supposed to be doing another one, um, would you cook the pastry first? Or, I think, or yeah. Well, I don't what, normally what would you, bake would you... my pastry blind for my sh- quiches. But we've got a garden oh, yeah, centre right. okay. center near us, and they always the cook in there always baked her pastry blind uh, before she oh, put her right. filling in. But I generally don't. But no, I don't do the uh, yeah, pastry jam that you used was it a gluten free? Just real ready made. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah gluten- you might be you might be safer to bake it blind the the next time, particularly if it came out with a soggy bottom. That uh... <laughs> I always sit mine on a metal tree to try and avoid a soggy bottom. Sort yeah, of, yeah. Well, all right. <laughs> and a yeah. preheated metal tree, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, preheated before you know um, you're putting the, the tap. And, and then you you put. Put your kettle on top of that heated metal tray. Yeah. Is that you put your quiche, you know, when you're doing the pastry in the quiche <coughs> bowl, you put it on the heated metal tray and cook like that. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Mm-hmm. Yes. When, Not when just on ma- a rack. Mm-hmm. When you're making your quiche, Jan, do you... Is your flan dish ceramic or is it metal? Ceramic. Uh, that's really yeah, good. the metal conducts the heat better. It, it's right. probably partly to do with it being being ceramic as well. I would All tend right. to bake it bake it blind. Uh, right. Yeah. So I'll try a, a metal one then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> better. <clears throat> Just to let you know, your garden centres and hairdressers are out. From the fifth of April. Yes. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and from the twenty sixth, from the twenty sixth of April, cafes, pubs, and restaurants can open till eight o'clock indoors, oh. but not serve alcohol. Oh, and right. travel oh. in and out of Scotland will be permitted. Oh, oh. 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 gosh, that's oh. good. Oh. <laughs> Oh, good news at last. Yeah. But 17th of May before four people from two households can meet indoors. From oh, when? Oh, right. 17th of May. Someone. Oh, that's a long time yet. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh. Any, all the questions? Any more mm-hmm. for any more before we, before we let the... Paul and let the bakers go off. Mary? Uh, Annette, Annette was talking there about the rice and the doing the potato scones. And I'm a Wigginshire lass as well. Mm-hmm. And when two of the best bakers in Stranra made good potato scones, but also made oatmeal scones. Uh-huh. And I've never come across them anywhere else. I can make them myself. I'm um, saying so quite good at them. <laughs> but uh, it was just nice hearing Annette saying that I've been left to draw a long, long time. I feel right. And Gillespie's made the most beautiful chat cakes. Uh-huh. I've never ever tasted them anywhere the same. All oh, right. Mm. That sounds good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm known as Molly, by the way. <laughs> eh? I'm known as Molly. Sheila listening. Oh, Molly. Mo- Molly, I didn't realise you came from Stranraer. Molly, right? Because I, I do it. as well. I mean, you and I have known each other for a long time, but yes. I didn't know from, well, you and I will have to have a chat about that. Yeah, we will. So, um, thank you very much then, Molly. That was nice. So, um, 
Any more for any more? Or should we let the bakers go off and put the put the oven on? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going for a glass of wine out my back door. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could join you. That was great. That was very good. You can, you can have another two people from another household, so you're welcome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> can you come out of the border? Yeah, I can't move. Oh, <laughs> you're, more, you're more than five miles. Oh. <laughs> that was excellent. That was good. Oh, it was a really good afternoon. Thank you, ladies. That was good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 B